People who are opposed to the Second Amendment aren't to be taken seriously in life simply because you can't trust them with simple logic. The right to defend yourself exists. It's inherent in nature. It isn't up to a group of rich people that I've never met to decide whether or not I get to defend my family. Want proof? Camouflage, fangs, venom, claws, stingers. Just wander into the jungle. See how defenseless all of our neighbors are. They didn't ask the Jungle Congress. And let's say they strip the Second Amendment. You think the hundred million gun owners are just gonna, what, give them up willfully? Oh, shoot. Of course not. Plus, how exactly do you think the government is actually gonna enact its gun laws on people? Wait for it. Men with guns. Men with guns. They're going to send men with guns to initiate violence against nonviolent people who haven't harmed anyone. People opposed to the Second Amendment are actually for gun violence and they can't even recognize it. But you know what really bothers me is when these celebrities come out firing shots against the Second Amendment. Jennifer Aniston, Jessica Alba, shit I'd unload on them. Oh, and Eddie Vedder. Eddie Vedder, the lead singer of Pearl Jam. No wonder they kept calling him daughter. Man, when Eddie Vedder set his sights on the Second Amendment, I had to laugh. You'd think if anyone would want people owning guns, it'd be him. I mean, think about it. The only reason his career with Pearl Jam took off was because of that whole incident with Nirvana and the shotgun when, well, whatever. Never mind. My fellow sheep, election season is upon us. Are you one of the 12% of Americans who still approves of our government? Then we need your help to force the other 88% into compliance. Our democracy depends on it. We're an organization called Citizens Against Too Much Unfettered Freedom, or CATMUF. CATMUF is a bipartisan flock of sheep whose goal is expanding government until nothing else remains. Because the government is here to help you. How can you help CATMUF help you? By only voting for candidates dedicated to expanding government. It's easy. You don't need to study the issues. No matter what a politician says when running for office, they're all dedicated to expanding government. And make sure you tell all your friends and family to vote for more government. Here at CatMuff, we don't care if you vote Democrat or Republican, as long as you vote for candidates committed to growing our federal family. CatMuff. Because folks just aren't smart enough to handle real freedom. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network on the consciousresistance.com and solpodcast.org. So today I'm delighted to have Justin Padini, who is a fellow uh, New Yorker. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he lives in Long Island. Um, he's, I guess you would say, an amateur comedian, anarchist, voluntarist, advocate for free markets and uh, freedom in general. And um, he's on Facebook under Justin Padini. And he's also recently made a YouTube channel. Uh, just his name, Justin Pedini, where he posts um, his videos that he that he makes for Facebook um, videos and all types of stuff, uh, mainly like um, you know comedy type videos, political satirical videos, just poking fun at various things and also trying to educate at the same time. Um, and we'll discuss a little bit about his path to anarchism and volunteerism, and what um, books, authors, and personalities influenced him along the way, and his interest in. The uh, deep-rooted psychological occult, which uh, is something that I have not delved too much in, but um, he has, so we're going to definitely get his take on that. And uh, and he's also a big follower of Mark Passio, which uh, is, he's, he's awesome too. And uh, yeah, I, I've learned a lot from him along the way. So yeah, so Justin, thanks a lot for coming on the show. Thanks again for having me. Pleasure to meet, uh, re-meet you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Um, yeah, it's great. I, I see you all around Facebook posting your videos, starting up awesome conversations and that's you know that's what that's what we, we do right we uh try to get people thinking right outside what we're they're normally um comfortable with right and uh oh, yeah it, yeah yeah I, I like to stir things up yeah you see some of my posts you'll be like this guy's a little out there you know i i think even for the anarchist community some people i, I make their stomachs churn a little bit with some of the stuff i get into but yeah it's fun <laughs> i think i think more people need to be like that you know and kind of just put this controversial uh ideas out because all it really does is, you know, like kind of change up the way you think about things. And, you know, what's so bad about that? Every famous philosopher kind of said like, hey, weighing ideas are, is a good thing. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's pretty much what progress is, is, is when people challenge what we already know and push the limits. And then, you know, you discover new things, right? Um, and, I, and actually, I, I was listening to 
Mark Passio's speech at Anarchopulco, one thing he said that kind of made me laugh was, he's like, I am that asshole that will, <laughs> that will say uncomfortable things. I'm not going to, you know, sugarcoat and tiptoe around the topic because it might offend you or, you know, hurt your feelings. <laughs> so, never yeah. expect that from me. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that's one of the reasons I got into him too. Like I said, so many, at, at this point, like this late in the game, I mean, you know, like it, basically half of everyone's money is taken, you know, you know, supposedly for the roads and, and all this. And, you know, you know, it's like, where's all this energy going? You know, right. every single thing is taxed. Every, all of our money is taken. Everybody just kind of just bends over and takes it. And that's why I like Mark because he just gets out there and he starts just like going in and like yelling about it. It's like, finally, <laughs> yeah. somebody that's not politically correct and makes people like, oh, oh, I'm like, this is great. We need more people like this. So I kind of try to do the same thing from a more like, comedic sarcastic point of way as opposed right. to I guess maybe I guess angry might be the word or yeah, something. Mark, Mark so Passio is a little bit serious he's a little bit serious compared to you, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I try to be more lighthearted in my approach, but kinda of say virtually the same thing. Right. You know. So that's kind of my yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think you do a good job of that. You know, uh, com- comedy is something that's a useful tool, and I and I definitely utilize it as well to um, get you know information that might be a little bit difficult for people to to you know process and register. But um, yeah, very useful. So so yeah, before we get into that though, um, just please explain your path to anarchism and voluntarism, um, and uh, yeah, what influenced you along the way, books, authors, and personalities like that. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. My story is a little, uh, a, li- a little more bizarre, probably, because I was never ever into politics. I'm a, I believe what you could, I think Larkin Rose coined this, but uh, a default anarchist or something. Like I, I, I never believed in government. Uh, the reason that is, is at a very young age, I come from, uh, I guess you could say, a poor family. Like the town I grew up in. Uh, you know, it was a nice town, you know, just outside of Queens and everything. But my father worked, you know, like literally seventy something hours a week. My mother worked two and even three jobs at points. And uh, there was just always this hustle and bustle for money and this constant stress. And as a very young child, like even, you know, maybe like seven or eight, I realized that we were always under duress. And it was just constant, like, we had to make money without money. And that's all they talked about or, or anything. And I just started to, like, you know, at that point, like, I just realized, like, hey, you know, it's not all sunshines and rainbows or however the quote goes. Like, you know, things are a lot more difficult um, than it actually, like, looks on the outside. You know, bright, sunny day, everyone's stressed out from, oh, what are we going to do? So, uh uh, that was one of the things. Um, and then, you know, between like movies and other influences, like uh, you know, something uh, when I was young that registered with me, uh, as silly as the sound is, have you ever seen the Japanese version of Godzilla King of the Monsters, Gojira, that that that, that, uh, that uh, heavy band is? No, I haven't. No? <laughs> Gojira, yeah. that's, that's, that's actually funny. Wait, so the word Godzilla is like phonetic for the way Japanese pronounce Godzilla? No, no, the, the name, the name Gojira, which is a now like a heavy, it's like a heavy metal band that's pretty oh, popular. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's called Gojira. <laughs> Americans, the, the American version of that is Godzilla. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. That's What's funny. interesting though, and how it relates to this topic is, if, if the two movies are actually very similar, but also very different, mm-hmm. because the original Japanese one, we'd occupied uh, Japan at the time. You know, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, and they didn't, we didn't want them to make a movie about like the destruction and the chaos that uh, we, we. You know, caused uh, during World War II when we dropped Little Boy and Fat Man on Hiroshima uh, and Nagasaki. Right. So in America, they came and they cut the movie up and whatnot and kind of took out a lot of that, you know, like neg- the negative idea of what America did. Mm. And I saw the Japanese one. And even at like, you know, like seven years old, I, it still conveyed that message that, you know, war is bad and, and, you know, the governments aren't what they say they are. And, you know, you watch the Japanese one, you see like little radiated kids like with their parents like melting, dying in hospice. It's not what people think. When you, when you think of the name Godzilla, it's not at all what the characters become. You know, kind of like any story of fiction, how it gets blown up over time. You watch that first movie, it, you know, it, it's pretty dark. Yeah. So that was, that was one of the ways. Um, and then just, you know, like media and whatnot. Uh, you know, I remember I got into Tupac when I was, uh, you know, in my team, my teams. And uh, he spoke a lot about, uh, you know, the police corruption and what they do to the inner cities. You know, how they would, uh, you know, like you specifically target those areas with like crack cocaine and like taught them how to cut it off and just distribute it amongst those people to keep them in a state of slavery. Mm-hmm. So that opened my eyes to a bit. And then I found out about George Carl and then he kind of just pushed me over the edge. Like, yeah, this whole thing's a lie. This is all <laughs> lying to you. Don't believe any of them. And I was like, this guy's right. He's <laughs> totally right. They're all lying. And everyone's too dumb to see it. So yeah. that's kind of how that happened. <laughs> Yeah, George Carlin. He he must have been an anarchist. I mean, although he never actually said it, but the way he oh, talked, 
Oh, I could, I could send you an interview. Oh, did said. he? Oh, did he say? Oh, okay. oh yeah, yeah. Oh, you better believe he said oh, more than once. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, cool. That makes sense then. <laughs> yeah, I'll because so much, so much of the stuff he said was spot on, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, like he knew what was going on, and yeah, totally, yeah, <laughs> totally. Smart guy. Yeah, he, he, uh, yeah, he did. I, I saw a couple, some videos of him when I was a kid, and uh, yeah, he did also influence me as well. And yeah, he's one of the greatest comedians, and and you know, you know, you got into comedy a little bit. I got into comedy a little bit, and uh, yeah, it's just yeah, he influenced so many people. And the guy had like such an unusually long lifespan in terms of of uh, his comedic career, like fifty years. Like the guy was so so active. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah, he just went till he was like he, he was seventy one. He was he he was still doing stand up. Like I think like three months before he died. And yeah. uh, you know because he was driven because he was trying to you know do the same thing that you're doing or I'm doing. He's basically wake up the people. He wasn't doing it just for laughs. He was trying to be like, hey, guys, listen, uh, I'm not joking, you know. He's yeah. even said that on interviews. I've had people try to tell me, like, oh, he was just joking. He didn't mean that. It's just like <laughs> he, he said it himself. Like, why would I believe you over the guy himself? Like, right, right. <laughs> we, we did, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it's interesting the uh, the society that we live in when when the, the the comedians are speaking more truth than you know the economists and the politicians and, and the, or you can like, say even well, the philosophers yeah. the, the modern philosophers you know it's more right. the, it's more the comedians that are like seriously <laughs> and like like and that's not a joke that's the funny part it's yeah like, yeah why is it that I be, because no one will listen which which is part of the reason I've been doing what I've been doing I've been running around for about about fourteen years now trying to wake people up like I'm no newbie to I'm like a newbie to like Facebook and the internet but I, I've been on this tip for a long time and I got to the point where just like you know what fuck it i'm just gonna go in and i'm just gonna start posting my jokes with all of these themes in it and i don't care what happens you know what i mean like shoot me i don't care i'm gonna have a good time laughing my way out i don't care i don't care fuck it you know so that, that's kind of my mentality now awesome awesome yeah i mean i mean definitely in, in, in doing that you um inevitably inevitably plant seeds along the way of people you know that become interested in what you're saying even though even though maybe they won't come out and tell you that it was because of you but you know just by you you know making those posts and, and making those videos it influences people you know it's inevitable so absolutely and that's all that matters like i said i'm not doing this for props or credit you yeah. know it's nice when people say like hey you know like great job you know that was funny or whatever right. but like i said my, my main goal at least with the videos i've been posting right. uh, is really just more geared towards trying to get people to think about things from a different point of view you know uh, it, like I said, you know, I, I see the looks I get sometimes from people when I bring up new ideas, whether it's about anarchy or just just in general. Like you just see people have never even considered or entertained ideas like this before. And I just find that very strange because, you know, I, I often think about all sorts of random things. You know what I would be doing if I was like, floating in space or, you know, I had maybe this or uh, one of my personal favorites actually is, you know, that that black hole that Bugs Bunny had that he would carry with him. Right. You know, he'd stick stuff. in. I fantasize about having one of those all day. The people <laughs> I would stick into this hole. <laughs> or just with the trouble I'd get it. Man, I go to a buffet. You know what I mean? But uh, and, you know, when you when you start bringing up ideas like no government, you, you literally like their you know their eyes dilate and they start to sweat and they they just like, what you you think that like where did you come up with those ideas? Which is actually the worst question they could possibly ask me because mm -hmm. I could go and I start ramming on them and they're like oh okay you know <laughs> uh, you know I, I've been trying to get people to live debate me on Facebook and nobody seems to want to so I wonder why that is. You know? <laughs> I see, I see. So, yeah. so any um, any books that you've read that really have uh, sparked your you know intellectual curiosity? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, what's it called? I've read uh, Mass Control by Jim Keith, which I heard got him killed. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, Mark actually brought that up in one of his last presentations. Mm. Uh, uh, Most Dangerous Superstition, Mark and Rose wrote, is hilarious. If you've not read that book, <laughs> read it. Yeah. Even if you're not an anarchist and have no interest in anarchy, yeah. just read it for the comedic uh, parts of it. It's really funny. I was giggling the whole time I read this. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> like, these people are stupid. Um, but, yeah, that was fantastic. Uh, um Let's see. I've read uh, Michael Tessarion. Well, I'm, I'm trying to think of the name. The name escapes me at the time. Um, I read John Vibes, uh, the trilogy that they, uh, him and Derek Bros wrote. Those uh, are really The really Conscious Resistance. Awesome. Right. Well, all three of them. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I forget which one's called which or whatever. Right, right, so I did right. read them in order, too. Cool. Um, but yeah, those were good, too. Um, Catcher in the Rye is always a classic. You know, that's the, usually the one all the assassins are holding after they allegedly, supposedly kill all these people, uh -huh. uh, which I don't believe. But. <laughs> Really, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, yeah, most dangerous superstition. Excellent, excellent book that uh, yeah. he really put things into perspective. Um, you know, talking about history and just just saying how, you know, so many people, you know, they 
they believe these things that that you know you know they look at the newspaper. There's one one quote I remember. You know, we look at the newspaper. And we're like, how can the world be so messed up? You know, and and it's you know the exact same mentality that most people have in their mind when they think of authority and they think of the state. And and so yeah, that's that's one thing he really demolished is the idea of authority being you know right or might might equals right you know or um the state you know basically debunking the, the legitimacy of the state right and that's that's something that's very that that's something that's the first thing that a person needs to do on their way to you know understanding morality is that realizing that wait a minute there's this enormous institution that every single day constantly is violating um you know, human rights, self ownership, property rights, and yet for some reason everyone tends to think this is the, the exception. Everybody else needs to adhere to those basic right. principles, except this giant institution we call the state. For some reason, and it's absolutely why we're why we're all living in chaos. It's the number one reason. If you give me just like a moment, I don't mean you in general. I just mean people. Right. Like if you just give me a moment or two, I can actually explain how every single problem that exists stems from that institution. It's very easy to just boil everything back. Well, if, if they didn't have to do this or, or this or that. Yeah. Uh, but you're right. It actually, it's actually not even the government itself. It's the belief in authority. Yes, That's exactly. actually Mark and yeah. Mark and... Uh, Mark, the, the, yeah, that rhymes. Mark and Mark and explain that to me. <laughs> because I was always just like... Uh, even I went to Ron Paul Fest back in 2012. Uh, you know, and I, people would ask me, what are you? I'm like, I, I don't know. I just hate the government. I'm just against the government. I, I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm not down with anybody's clique or anyone's right. party. I just don't like the government, you know? <laughs> and then after yeah. hearing them explain that, that it's not even the government, it's exactly. this belief that we just have to blindly obey authority. Exactly. It's like, oh, so that's, you know, that's the very core and the very bottom. Right. People just believe that we have to do this just because someone else tells us, which really, when you think about it, well, why would that be? And then you want me to explain this? And it's just like, well, <laughs> you know, I'm sure you know how that goes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, it is really amazing how... The worst atrocities that that people are afraid of that will happen if the state is not there have only occurred because people blindly obey people in authority without thinking, without considering, is this a moral thing that I'm doing, right? Well, you know, if if I wasn't acting on behalf of this institution, if I did this myself and I claim responsibility for this action, would I feel good after doing this? And for the most part, those the answers no, yet... They do it, and they're like, "Well, I was just told it was my job, you know. I was ordered to do it," and they're able to kind of shirk off that responsibility. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, the, the the appeal to authority, the belief in authority, is very dangerous. One of the most dangerous uh, things that that a person can um, can hold in their in their mind. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, I, I love how Larkin Rose focuses so much on that because it's, yeah, yeah, he, 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 yeah, exactly. Larkin's like the guy that's kind of like there at, at the line, at like that border in the front. Like this is what the problem is, you know what I mean? <laughs> and once you understand that, like he he's that guy, like right there in the front, and that's why he's so important. But once you get past that, which again I did from a very young age, like they was like, oh, that's the problem. I'm with you. That's when, like I said, you get more into Mark stuff and like that deep rooted psychological issues. Uh, based on what you just said, actually, one of the reasons we have so many problems is that because people go against their conscience and their, you know, what's their uh, talking, you know, their voice internally, that's why we have, you know, it bubbles up in your subconscious mind and then people lash out in other ways. You know what I'm saying? Like one of the reasons, like, for example, the highest rate in, uh, uh, I believe, uh, brut uh, uh, you know, uh, brutality, uh, police beating their wives or whatever you call it. I can't right. think of it. Uh, you know, well, why would domestic, domestic, domestic abuse, right? So, thank you, domestic abuse. Yeah, right, right. it's because they, they go against their conscience a lot, you know, right. like doing certain things, and it festers up inside of them, and then it has to come out somewhere else, right, you know? Right, Pe right. People don't understand balance and how in life you need a certain balance, and if you go out of balance, you're going to try to make up for it in another way. Yeah. And people don't seem to understand this, and that's kind of, you know, like why I, you know, I'm attempting to do what I do, because I, I feel that I do understand this, and I, I don't violently beat people up in my spare time. <laughs> Yep, I'm very appreciative of that. <laughs> and anybody, yeah, yeah. anybody, who, games, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I got games, yeah. a war for that. Oh, <laughs> you know, 
it. Not on the street. No, thank you. I'm very peaceful. Yeah, actually, that's that's another interesting topic is video games. People blaming uh, blaming video games for the violence in society. This is why people are violent because they play violent video games, or even or even blame violent movies. Right. right. You know, this is why people are around violent. during World War Two and one exactly. and the Crusades <laughs> and the Inquisition in Northern Ireland and yeah and all that. You know, it's the video games. Yeah. You know? God of War was around back then. You know, they had it to. had to be. Yeah, yeah, because you know everyone's always looking for a fucking excuse. <laughs> You know, it's like, it's not that. It's like, maybe it's because nobody really knows what reality is, and we just have to blindly obey these institutions and do whatever they say, or we'll be like caged, kidnapped, or killed. Right. And maybe that festers up in people's minds, and they take out violence in other ways, like rape, and murder, and, and, you know, drug abuse, and alcoholism, and which are really the same thing. Mm. Maybe that's why, you know? It's like, oh, Justin, you're just crazy. You're a dreamer, man. It's just like, no, I'm actually well-read, and people don't take me seriously because I lift weights and wear necklaces like this, you know? <laughs> Right, right. So yeah, so you mentioned Mark Passio and the occult. So yeah, get please get into that and what that's all about and, and why you're interested in it. Oh well, for one, it's absolutely fascinating. Like I said, the, the first interview I heard him do, he he wasn't into anything political, and which is again what, what, kind of my thing. I'm not really it, there is no political solution. There isn't. It's a spiritual problem, and the reason that we have a political problem is because we have a spiritual problem. Uh, but anyway, when I listened to his interview, like I said, he started talking about these things that I had known a bit about already, except when I listened to him, I wasn't one of these people that was, you know, had too big of an ego to be like, I was like, hey, this guy definitely knows more than I do. I'm going to listen to this guy. And then I started looking him up and he had, I mean, you know, 10 hour lectures and all sorts of, I mean, that guy's put together so much information. It's, it's unreal. But, um, well, the occult, in a nutshell, I guess the best way to describe it is uh, it's the study of, well, occult itself actually just means hidden. People think it means like devil worship or, or you know, oh, you're, you're into Satan, which I kind of play up a little bit. I'm not a, a Satanist or anything. But <laughs> I think it's funny because people say that I look like the devil. So I'm like, oh, yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> Me and Lucifer go way back. Yeah, totally. Uh, which couldn't be further from the truth. Right. But uh, occult, it comes from the, the term ocular, like occult, ocular. It means hidden, hidden mm -hmm. from sight. That's mm -hmm. it. Um, and in a nutshell, it's the study of what you call the macrocosm, which is, you know, the universe, what we're all experiencing, and the microcosm, the individual, how mm. you uh, apply to the universe, and it, it differs across scales. Mm. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with, uh, uh, you know, like the, fi the Fibonacci sequence and, and pi and phi and all that. Mm, no, no, if you can explain, please explain. Yeah, absolutely. Like, okay, so if you were to look at, the, uh, let's say, the tip of your finger, right? You know how there's, like, there's a spiral there? Okay. Like, if you look, it, come, it comes out, or like a seashell, right? right? Right. Or if you look at flowers, you have that same spiral that comes out. And, it, you know, I'm not going to get into the, the details because it, it gets a bit complicated. Right, right. But basically everything in creation, and I mean everything, comes out of this same uh, pattern or mm. whatnot. So if you were to take, let's say, a telescope or a real, really strong telescope and look, to, you look out into deep space, right? It looks virtually the same as if you take a microscope and you look uh, like, you know, you look down at the smaller stuff in a microscope, you will see the same patterns repeating and repeating. Mm. So, it, you know, it like in a, it, it's hard to explain, I guess, it quickly and whatnot. You have to look into it. There's a great video called Powers of Ten. But basically, you get into quantum physics and stuff like that, and you just start to realize that nothing really makes any sense. And, you know, I think the people in these institutions, I mean, like high, high over, uh, government officials, the, uh, high in the church and stuff, they, they know a lot more than they're, like, feeding out to the masses. Um, another thing with the occult, too, is the study of symbolism, which is probably my favorite area of that, because I, I find that stuff fascinating. The study oh. of symbolism. Can you go into that? <laughs> go into that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you a better example. Okay. Yeah. So t take, for example, right? Uh, just so you know, and this is something I didn't know until about five years ago or so, but the reason like every business has a logo, like virtually every business has a logo, is uh, because symbols affect your subconscious mind. And they don't teach us this. You know, uh, for example, in advertising, they might kind of like, you know, get into it a little bit or something. But it, I'll give you an example, a really good example, right? Okay. So what is uh, gasoline is what? Gasoline is energy, right? Mm. Where does everything on the planet get its energy from? We all get our energy from the sun. That's why there's life, right? right, right. Subconsciously, every living creature knows and understands this. It's not something you think about. But, I mean, if the sun went out one day, you know, me and you would probably be like, hey, uh, you know, Dania, we should probably do something about this. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, so anyway, these billionaire motherfuckers that know all this and then harbor and hide all this knowledge from the general public, they know all this, right? So when you look at your gas stations, they hide solar symbolism in the gas stations. Mm. For example, look at mobile, right? The, the O in mobile is red, just the O. And your typical person that, that oh, that's just a conspiracy theory. It's like, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> what's the, then you have, take, let's say, Shell, the Shell station, right? Shell uses yellow beams of light. Mm. Then you have Sun Oco. Right. Sun Oco. Uh, BP uses a sunflower. 76, uh, that place, uses a big red ball behind it. Kokono uses light rays. And that's <laughs> why when you go to a gas station at the, the store, a lot of times it's called a Sun Mart. I mean, they don't sell the sun in there. You could maybe get some sunflower seeds in there. Right. But you know, why, why would that be unless there's some truth in what I just said? Mm. And they don't teach us things like this. Because when you see that sun symbol subconsciously, it like influences you to go and use that business. I'm not telling you that like, you know, he's like, I need to go to Sunoco. But it implants <laughs> the idea in your head. Right. Same thing with FedEx. If you look at the FedEx logo in the negative space, there's an arrow. Uh, between the E and the X. And when you see that subconsciously, it bangs you subconsciously, and you, and you think, oh, man, they're on the go. They're, they're, they're going the right way. I, I should give my package to them. And this <laughs> stuff is used all around you. And virtually nobody I've ever spoke to, with the exception of a very few people, have any idea about this. And it makes you feel very alone. <laughs> <laughs> wow, very cool. Um, I'll give you yeah. more examples if you want. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, please. <laughs> Oh, another one. Uh, this one, uh, this one from from Mark, I learned right. Uh, another one they explain is how uh, uh, words and George Conley gets into a lot of this too. But how words play on your psyche, right? And it's not an accident that these specific words are chosen. Uh, um, but like you know that, that saying they say like time is money, right? right? right. It's a fam famous saying, right? right, right well, right. think about the language that they use uh, when uh, for for these terms, right? Think about the language, right? During your free time, right. what do you do? You spend time doing things depending on what you pay attention to what happens change occurs don't that make sense you know that's not an accident <laughs> it, it affects the flow of your psychology right. and people think it's like a joke it's not a joke words have a lot of power one, one of the best things george Cohen explained i'd say in the stand-up uh if you actually watch the one on soft language he explains how after the first world war uh you know when the soldier was suffering was suffering from something called shell shock right, right. And he explains shell shock it sounds like the guns cocking themselves yeah then after the next war they changed it to battle fatigue and he explains like shell shock battle <laughs> fatigue <laughs> yeah and then after that generation died off or whatever then they changed it to uh, operational exhaustion and he says like <laughs> sounds like something that might happen to your car and then, <laughs> By the end of it, it's called post-traumatic stress disorder, and the whole the humanity is all taken out of it, and nobody gets their money anymore because of the sounds of the words and the syllables. Right. This is occult information. This is the type of stuff they don't want you to know about so they can manipulate you. Uh, and then, again, you say this to the average person, like, you're, you're crazy, man. Like, who do you think you are with all your, you know, this is that. And I'm just trying to help, you know, have a good time, you know. And, uh, and like I said, people just, they just fear what they don't understand. And then when somebody comes along and tries to explain this to them, they just kind of get butthurt, you know. Yeah, I, I think I, that's why Mark's pissed, you know. Right. <laughs> to explain it to so many people, it's like, ah, at this point. Well, I still have some, you know, some, some humor left in me, though. <laughs> so I'm trying to help. Maybe he was a humorous guy when he was younger. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll see. Actually, I was even going to make a joke about that. And I know I recently noticed that our, our friendlies, you know, the ice cream place, right. they adopted the sun. And I thought, you know, adopting the sun's a nice thing to do. Right. But I'm pretty sure they adopted the sun from the sky. But in turn, that would just melt all of their ice cream, you know? <laughs> so this, these are the weird things that I think about. <laughs> Yeah, I remember watching that uh, that video with with George Carlin, the evolution of the uh, you know, the PTSD um, uh, descriptions. Yeah, it, it, you're you're so you're so right about the power of words. You know, it's it's very subtle, but also very deep. The um, the effect that it has on people's psyche, and people tend to underestimate that. And 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 you know, it's it's funny when, when I tell people what I do. You know, I have this podcast and and you know YouTube channel, and we talk about various things, interview various people. And they're like, yeah, I mean, that's all well and good, but what are you actually doing? Like, all you're doing is talking, right? So, what are you actually <laughs> doing? And, and I'm, and in my mind, I'm thinking, that's well, so stupid, well I mean, <laughs> I mean, in my mind, I'm thinking, like, well, every single action is preceded by a thought, right? Correct. <laughs> Concepts, Correct. you know? If you want to change people's actions, you first have to appeal to their mind, their thoughts, yeah. you know, the concepts. So, to me, that's vital. Like, people you know helping people understand what philosophy and morality and economics are this, this kind of things are vital because 
Um, yeah, I mean, I think about yeah. it like this: like that, whoever said that to you, they had to say it to you to make you think about that. Right? You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you want not to cut you off, but you yeah. want to hear a really good one, yeah, real go quick. Ahead, go ahead. One of my friends who I was trying to put this information onto, uh, he really doesn't like this type of stuff, and I, you know, I kept telling him about it. And uh, one time he says to me, "I don't like people with firm convictions," and I just looked at him and I said, "Well, isn't that kind of a firm conviction?" And he didn't know what to say to me. Yeah, just yeah. like. Why nobody thinks, but yeah, sorry. Or people who say, uh, I, I don't like labels. I mean, I mean that, that to me, that's a confusing, that's a confusing concept because it's like, well, I mean, we, we assign, we, like you go into the, you go into the dictionary, there's labels all over the place. There's words and they have definitions. Is that, <laughs> are, are, is that not a book of labels? Like, like how do you communicate to people without using words that define things and that are basically labels? How do you, we can't communicate. <laughs> Right. Emojis, emojis are coming back. Baby emojis. I know that. emojis are coming back. Which, to be honest with you, I'm actually kind of for. Not that I use them, but like uh, when they compare them to hieroglyphs, it's just like you know, maybe <laughs> if we just spoke in hieroglyphs, people wouldn't be so dumb because you have to use both hemispheres of your brain to understand and read hieroglyphs. So I'm actually not even against that. Like as silly as it sounds, like you want to use symbols, I'm all for it. Plus, I like to draw, so you know. <laughs> And then, now you got me thinking. Got... How would we uh, describe volunteerism with emojis? I'm, I'm trying to think about. <laughs> maybe so, that, maybe something like this. <laughs> you know, that's it. You know, right. or maybe I, I use the peace sign a lot. No, no, that's yeah, a... You have like a cop with a stick running away from someone like this. You know, like, <laughs> you know. You know? Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, but I, I, I find those kind of uh, those kind of arguments very strange. It's like. It's like th this is exactly how we progress as a society. How we, you know, how 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 new ways of thinking emerge is by people challenging with words, with concepts, <laughs> you right. challenge the prevailing dogma, right? And and basically, dogma would be defined as people believing a particular um, ideology without understanding why. They just believe it because they believe it, you know. Because their mommy told them. Yeah, because anybody in authority told them, you know, your teacher, your, you know, the politician, or your parents. And 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 that's uh, yeah, that's not really the foundation of a truly you know aware and civilized society, right? We need we need a society of people that um, that you know don't depend on either books or politicians to make their decisions for them, but rather you know are equipped, well equipped with a sense of morality that they can learn to make decisions for themselves of what's right, what's wrong. And, you know, amazingly enough, I think that in itself would put an end to so much conflict, you know. Right. Away well, that, that's what, I'm sorry. Ahead, that's what the government's job is there to do. The government, from, I guess you could say, like the occult perspective or whatever, uh, the government's really there to keep everyone running and operating from the reptile part of the brain. That's why when you look on television, all it is is sex and partying and, you know, hedonistic type of stuff. Right. Because they keep everybody uh, in that part of the brain uh, in order, because that's the easiest way to control people when they're just, you know, fight or flight, kill or be killed, sex, I got to eat this, this is going to be a good time. Right. They don't want people like me or you sitting around thinking about like, hey, why is this, this? Or, you know, <laughs> like, what am I like, why are crossing guards always old ladies when old ladies need the most help across the street? Or, you know, like, I start like thinking about <laughs> dumb stuff, you know, it's like, why is this or that? And then when you do that and you sit around enough and you let your brain balance back out, you realize like this whole thing is just a lie. And they're just keeping everyone in a perpetual loop in order so they don't still have time to sit there and figure it all out. I, you know, I just want to sit under a train and think about stuff. You know, I'm not interested in all this kind of nonsense, but th that's what they do. They keep everyone uh, stuck in the R complex of the brain. That way the neurons don't fire up to the high brain. And if because when that happens, you realize like, Hey, I'm my own sovereign individual. I don't need anyone telling me what to do. I understand, and you know they can't have that, or it's right. game over for them. Right. So, yeah. so, so, given your your understanding of uh, of anarchism and the occult, um, let me just ask you one question: how How high do you think Trump should build the wall? To <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, actually, something I thought actually uh, a while ago, I don't remember if I had this perfectly in my head anymore, but what, what I was actually hoping was that, uh, what's it called, in, in, instead of Trump building the wall, I, I imagined him one night during like a purple lightning storm from the top of Trump Tower sending and blowing up uh, Mexico. And what I was hoping what would happen is something in, in like in like the Gulf there would actually bubble up and we out of the out of the bay would become like a Mexican Godzilla. It was just a little bit, a little bit shorter than the, the normal Godzilla and plow through Mexico, go all the way to Nevada, stop, uh, like stomping out Trump Tower along the way, creating jobs for more of the immigrants. It was something like that. I don't remember exactly how it went, but something like that. 
<laughs> yeah, nice. So, so actually, let me ask you on this topic. Uh, yeah. What do What do you think of uh, you know so called anarchists, Trump supporting anarchists? Well, okay, so so I'm actually pretty open about this uh, because you know, like now, uh, I'll say this much: I hate liberals. I hate them. Like I, I, they they drive me nuts with their collectivism, and they don't even understand why they're evil. That's the problem. See, right. I get Re- Republicans know why they're evil. They're generally racist. Now, again, not all of them. I, I know people that are Republicans that aren't like, wait, but in general, they're generally racist people that want to keep everything the same. Right. Liberals, on the other hand, they just want to help everyone, but they want more money to. Do do it and they don't give you know what i mean right, right, so, right. And, and that's the thing because of their collectivist ideology and think that you owe them something uh um you, you, uh, so i'm sorry back to the trump thing they just get crazy about trump i don't actually hate donald trump the way most people do uh-huh. i don't think he's really helping either uh, i don't pay too much attention and i do find him remotely entertaining uh <laughs> but the way they make him sound like he's this, this evil antichrist evil vile sick you know it seems like business as usual to me. Right, uh, right. I'll give you even a great, a great point. One of my really good friends is a lawyer, right? And this guy hates Donald Trump more than you could believe. Uh-huh. He hates this guy. He hates him, posts about him all the time. Uh-huh. And he actually, uh, he was trying to convince me that Donald Trump is the Antichrist. He actually thinks he's the Antichrist. So in the midst of him trying to convince me of this, he said to me, Justin, Donald Trump, uh, Trump's uh, CIA pick wants Edward Snowden dead. And I said to him, I'm like, I know. And I looked at him and I go, but all the CIA wants Edward Snowden dead, not just Donald Trump's pick. And this lawyer goes, all right, good point. And I'm just like a street guy, you know, like that's the, everybody's got their agenda. They're trying to fit, you know, like I'm, just trying to, I'm out here just trying to be honest. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. Yeah. I am an anarchist, but I don't even like, like, you know, like, like, oh, I don't, you know what I mean? I'm just, I just think people are stupid. You know, that's, that's my whole thing. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, I guess you, you can say in a sense he's done a service in, in the sense that he was really pissed off a lot of uh, liberals. And uh, and, and that, yeah. def- that definitely makes a lot of anarchists happy. Yeah, because, yeah. Because sure. certainly the anarchists, have, the, the anarchists have not pissed off the liberals, but Trump has. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Like you wouldn't believe. It's really funny. I didn't know how bad they were until Donald Trump got into office. Right. That, and then it really came out. One thing just I'd just like to mention real quick, just so people do hear it, though. Uh, one thing I do like about Donald Trump, even though he did nothing about this, is while he was running for election or whatever it was, he brought up about how Bush had something to do with 9-11. And of course, that just kind of just went under the rug and everything like that. But mm. I always love bringing that up to Trump supporters. Like, hey, remember when your boy you know, brought up how 9-11 was a lie? You know, like that might be kind of important given the state of everything that we've based all of our laws on since 9-11. Right. You know? so that's always fun. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of like you where I um, I don't really pay attention, you know, to yeah. you know what Trump says, or what laws are passed or what taxes, you know, are passed. I mean, it's just, um, you know, it's political theater. I don't think that it really affects us in the grand scheme of things. And I don't think, you know, we need to pay attention. And you know what? The more people don't pay attention, I think that's that's kind of the best way. That's like that's my goal with this this channel is like, you know, when I tell people the name of this channel, they get confused, like peaceful anarchism. That sounds like an oxymoron. How can you put those two together? (laughs) So. It, it, so so basically, my um, my goal with this channel is just basically education, right? Teaching people about you know philosophy, economics, morality, volunteerism, anarchism, capitalism, free markets, all, all that kind of stuff. Thank you. And and so you know, my goal is to basically just get rid of government the, the same way we got you know blockbuster was <laughs> you know got rid of just make just, it obsolete, right? Absolutely. Make it obsolete. Just right. phase it out because nobody cares. Nobody cares. And that, that's my goal, you know, to show people that, yes, actually, the majority, the vast majority of your life is anarchic. You know, you make most of the decisions in your life, not because someone told you to make them, but because you voluntarily chose, you know, and, and the vast majority of your life is like that. But there is a small minority of, of, of your life that is um, is forced and controlled and regulated. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to just going to make the point. You're absolutely right. Like, for example, when you, you know, like, let's say get together with a woman, it's voluntary. Right. 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 Yeah. It's, it's the government that's rape. You know what I mean? The government's right. there raping everyone, uh, you know, and where the, and the anarchist uh, like version of that would be, hey, want to hang out with me? Would you like to go out on a date? Right. Government would be the ones raping. You know what I mean? Like, come here. I'm going to, you know, up against <laughs> a tree or something like that. Like, that's actually the difference. And again, this isn't my opinion. Like, yeah, this yeah. is really how it is. It's yeah. just that's it. You know, it's well, as simple as that. And the problem is people don't associate the state with violence. And, and so when people advocate, like, like um, I was uh, 
you know, as some of my family actually supports. <laughs> this is kind of this is kind of uh, illustrative of my family. They support the straw ban, the ban on straws in California. <laughs> well, that sucks. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I had to control myself to not like lash out. I'm sure if that was you, you would have probably lashed out, but I did it because my my wife. I, I told my wife in the car, like, you noticed that I, I held back, right? She's like, I noticed. Thank you very much. <laughs> because really? I'm like, yeah, I just didn't because I know, like, uh, most you know, most of my families are liberal and and just hardcore like Bernie su- supporter slash oh, socialist type people. Yeah. And you know, like you know, they mean well, of course, but they just don't. They don't see the violence, right? They they don't see us coercion. And I was telling my wife in the car, like, you know, you know, what really gets me is that if I were to, she's, a, you know, most people who advocate for you know a new law or new tax, they're cowards. That's kind of how I look at them because you tell them, okay, let's say you ban on straws, right? Now let's say a company wants to use straws, and let's say you can't advocate for a politician to do that for you or police to enforce that law. Are you yourself going to go to that company and force them to stop using straws? Would you, like, you know, hit the hit the business owner over the head, force him, take away all the straws and burn? What are you going to do? do? Is that justified? Is that Does that seem right to you? You know, because, because they say that these straws hurt the local wildlife. Like, are you willing to violate this person's you know, um, freedom. You know, yeah, freedom. yeah, right. Go ahead. Yeah, no, it's yeah, it's so maddening. Like people just don't seem to understand what government is, and yeah. that's why, like you know, guys like me and you, like try to explain these things. Like uh, one of the points that uh, br- was brought up to me that I love using now is the whole idea that like vo- voting, at least for political office, not you know if you like vanilla or chocolate better or whatever, <laughs> but when you vote for a political candidate. That's immoral, and that's not an opinion. Like, you can prove that. Like, the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, uh, if me and my neighbor, let's say we disagree disagree over some money that they want to use for, like, a school or something like that, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm not going to go to his door and kick his door in and, like, steal his money with with a gun, or he's not going to do that to me. We get along just great. But he's going to go put his vote in a ballot somewhere and have other people do it for him, which is totally immoral. It's like hiring a hitman. You know what I'm saying? Like, I guess... I guess, you know, you hiring a hitman is, to kill someone is a little less immoral, but it's still totally immoral anyway. Like, why would you do that? Like, we can't. That's my whole thing all the time. I always just say, can't we just do things differently? You know, mm-hmm. is it really that much to ask to just consider other options? Right. And one of the, uh, the occult things, too, uh, is just in general, is that they completely shut down everyone's imagination. People have no imagination anymore, which is why I write all these jokes. You know, people ask me, like, where do you, where do you come up with all this stuff? Because I'm, I'm all day. I'm just getting warmed up. I come up with stuff. <laughs> You know, like you wouldn't believe. And it's because I, I just think about stuff. I don't watch TV. Right. I don't, you know, if I go for a walk, I don't put headphones on. Uh-huh. You know, I'll just wander around and I'll just think. And, it, you know, everybody's so busy with the radio on and the television. They don't just have time to just sit there and just be like, what the hell's going on, man? Just, you know, I just want to sit under a tree, man. That's it. You know, I just always, I always owe somebody money or I have to do this or there's just always something going on right. to just be like, what, what's this all, what's the point? No, it doesn't. <laughs> No one does it. And now we have laws banning straws because people don't do these things. You know, it's just like, really? Straws? You know, I get people get bent out of shape about rape and, 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 you know, and eugenics and stuff. Right. But straws. straws? Really, guys? Like, really? You know, it's it's, that thing's gotten that bad that, you know, like, got to get rid of those straws, you know? My, you know, sea turtle somewhere, you know. Actually, I had a tortoise one time. It actually swallowed a Nerf dart hole and shit that thing out when I was a kid. So, you know, and that's about five, ten times thicker than a straw. Yeah, yeah. My favorite meme I saw was, uh, you know, you see a table with, like, lines of uh, cocaine, something like that, and. And then you yeah, a, ra- a razor blade. Did you see that one? <laughs> so funny, yeah. the razor blade, and you see the straws. It's like, quick, the cops, quick, hide the straws. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw that. Was, that was cool. I love memes. I, I love these That's things. Awesome. I, I don't, yeah, memes are great. Memes are funny, man. <laughs> but yeah, it, you know, I, I just, it, it just doesn't seem that people have critical thinking skills, right. which is why, like I said, you know, if anybody watches my jokes, and like, if you really sit there and like comb over them, like, there's like jokes, like hidden in jokes in some of these things. Yeah. Because I just want people to start using their brain more. And I know I might come off like an arrogant prick or like, oh, who do you think you are to say that? And I'm just like, I'm just somebody that thinks about stuff. <laughs> That's it. I don't think I'm cool. I don't think I'm a tough guy. I don't, I don't think I'm anything. I just want to hang out, be peaceful, right. and just laugh, and that's it. Because awesome. life is depressing. Yeah, yeah, you got to get a laugh out of it. I mean, uh, what, what was it? I think it was Oscar Wilde. He said, "If you want to, oh. if you want to tell people the truth, make, them, make laugh, them laugh, or else they'll kill you." Right? Otherwise, they'll kill you. Yeah, it's one of my favorite quotes, and that's why I do what I do. Yeah. You know, 
whether they laugh or not, they still probably want to kill me. Still want to kill you, know, you. <laughs> you, you know what's actually want to hear something funny? Yeah. I actually thought I already have the material easily from multiple albums, but if I ever get like my first album cover, what I decided recently I was going to do is you know the typical like the typical standard idea of where you have like a mob of people chasing someone, uh, you know, like chasing some guy or like he's strung up on like a you know like hung by a noose. Okay. I was going to do the reverse where it was going to be me with a pitchfork and a torch chasing all the townspeople back into their homes, like yelling about this type of stuff because that's kind of how it's been for the past 14 years of my life where it's like guys hey you know pay attention you know we're, we're like I, i've been right about all of these things and it's not about me being right my ego that we could if we just looked into this we wouldn't have these problems right. and everyone's just, oh justin oh you're just that's that crazy conspiracy stuff i'm just like <laughs> hey ever notice conspiracy theorists and critical thinker have the same initials just saying you know <laughs> that's funny i never thought of that um so so let me ask you when you meet some somebody new What's your way of introducing these topics, and like, how do you go about explaining? It? I'm just curious. Oh, I'm I'm terrible, actually. <laughs> I, I I regularly walk up to strangers. I walk up to hot chicks. Uh, I actually walked up to some gorgeous girl one time in a gym and told her that whole. I, I broke down that whole thing about uh what, about the symbolism with the sun and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just went right up to her, told her that, and I just walked away from her. I just never said <laughs> it's just like I didn't try to get her number or anything like that. I was like, hey, by the way, did you know about this? I love messing with people. I have a list. I, I, I try to do what Adam Kokesh does, but like without like I don't videotape it or anything. Oh, I gotta videotape it. <laughs> I so should, awesome. yeah. I'll just walk up to strangers and start. I'll be like, hey, you ever you know think that they might be lying to us about stuff? I'm like, well, what do you mean? I'm mean, like, you know, the whole thing, like, well, all this, all big lie, you know? And be like, well, what do you mean? And I'll get it to them into it that way because people. I don't come off like mean. People like find me amusing, generally speaking. So I kind of have that niche yeah. where it's like I don't make them too uncomfortable, but they, they'll leave. Whether was he serious or was he joking? And I'll leave them thinking about like, and I'll tell them a few jokes in the midst of it, so they don't like get too you know defensive or anything. So that's that's kind of my approach. <laughs> so yeah. all right. So let me ask you: aside from George Carlin, who who is your other your favorite comedians? Well, to be honest with you, I actually don't even like comedy really too much. Really? I, I, Whoa. No, not really. I, I watched the stand-up that you did. I remember that, that Transylvania joke was really good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I do watch some, but I, I, like, I'm not big into stand-up comedy. You know, I love Bill Hicks. Uh, Doug Stanhope's great, too. Yeah. But if you notice, it, they're guys that are just trying to be honest. Like, yeah. most comedy to me, it's, you know, you some guy got met some guy on stage talking about, you know, he's at Starbucks, and, you know, he's got a scarf on, and he saw a pretty girl, and she put, like, a Rice Krispie treat, and that was sweet, and so was she, or some stupid... <laughs> Some so hey, I don't like all the soft shit. Like I'm not right. like a tough guy. I don't mean like I'm looking around to beat people up. Right. But it's just the ideas that people aren't willing to entertain. You know, like 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 darker, like harder concepts and mm, stuff. And it's right. kind of you know, uh, you know, like harder things. Like you, you want to hear like a premise that that I thought of recently. Sure. Go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead. Yeah. So 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 anyway, uh, basically, um, in a nutshell, uh, I've been attacking the LGBT uh, recently, which is very very controversial. Now I'm totally in favor of all transgender people and all gay people and whatever you want to do, no problem. I don't have a problem with that. My problem is the fact that they're putting forth legislation trying to silence the First Amendment and like make you say things. And if you study history, humanity's fought a really long time uh, in order to have the ability to say whatever we want without getting gutted. And I'm not gonna go out, I'm not, I'm not gonna let that go without a fight. So a premise that I had recently that I haven't used yet, I was thinking, it's just like, you, you know, like the LGBT flag and everything. I was thinking, you know what, uh, what's it called? You have, imagine you had a group of, a bunch of Skittles in your hand. If I took those Skittles and I identified them as M&Ms, would you still be able to taste the rainbow, you know? You know, the flag and everything. I'm a dick. That's the problem. Like, I'm a dick. That's good. That's you know? good. Yeah, thank you. I, I, I'm an idea guy. Like, I wouldn't claim to be a stand-up. I'm, I'm learning, but I come up with like ideas like you wouldn't believe. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. When I was doing stand-up, I was mostly talking about you know, like my family, my wife, my kids, my dog. Yeah, uh, my yeah, I don't pro- have any of that. My stuff. profession. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's kind of what I was into that time and. You know, then I got into um, then I got into all this stuff, altruism, and anarchy, and, and capitalism. So yeah, I really have no idea what where my <coughs> co- where my comedy would have evolved had I continued. Um, yeah, I wonder. I don't know. I don't know. It, it would it would be cool. You know, there's not too just many put ideas down, man. That, that's all you got to do. Just put like all I do. Like you know, I wouldn't claim to be anything, yeah. but I, I could probably stand for eight hours straight and just run off idea after idea. Right. I just jot them down, and if I have an idea, I'll just put it in like my notepad on my phone or something like that, yeah. and I'll let it sit for a while, and then I'll comb back over it later. And be like, oh, that was a good idea. Like, oh, that was kind of funny. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know. 
Like, hey, you want another quick premise I'm going to do soon was sure. just, uh, I know this guy, he's a CEO, really nice guy. He comes to my house sometimes. He's always busting my chops about, you know, my place isn't like pristine or, you know, it's like a mess or something like that. And, you know, he's always bitching at me about this. It's like, dude, you work in a jail. Were you concerned about like a fruit fly by my sink? Like you work in a prison, man. You know, he's, you know, God forbid there's like a splash of orange juice on my door handle. You know, meanwhile, he's got his flash or he's up in some guy's asshole. You know, just you missed the spot. And, you know, it's just like, like, you know, like, why is it, what's wrong with everyone? You know, like. <laughs> Maybe right. I'm a bad person. I, I don't rule that out. It's possible I'm evil. Uh, I might be sad. I, I don't know. You know, I just have a lot of questions nobody wants to answer. I, you know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, just keep jotting it down, bro. Like you said, like, if you ever want to sit down and work something out, I love coming up with ideas. I love it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean. I mean. Uh, yeah. I, I. I am constantly thinking of jokes. So I, I'm, that's just how my mind is. I'm always. I'm always thinking about jokes. Like after. After you do comedy, it's like it's hard to turn that off. You know. Uh, I just think. It, it, I just think like when I say something like like if I perform that, that would probably be funny. <laughs> Yeah, no, just put them, just put them down, man. Just, just keep putting them down. That's what I do. You know, I like. I remember when I first, uh, when I first, man, people have told me that I should have been a comedian since I was like seventeen. That's actually part of my, part of my like intro to like the five minutes I was doing. Uh. You know, two things you've, uh, uh, you, you know, two things I've heard since I was seventeen is you should be a comedian and please step out of the car. <laughs> so I'm trying to go a new route, you know. So I only started jotting ideas down about like five years ago. But I have so much. I, I have more unreleased material than Tupac. Like, I'll put it to you like that. Like, I, you know. <laughs> So if they do kill me, expect me to be around for a while after. <laughs> the posthumous material will be going on exactly. <laughs> for long just, after. Man, I like the stand-up you did, honestly. I'm not just saying that either. Like it, it was funny, and I'm I don't really like I'm not really into like you know like normal stand-up type of stuff. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. It's uh, it was a lot of fun. I just did it for a year. Uh, yeah. Right before my my wife gave birth to our second child, and uh, yeah, I really had fun with it in Manhattan. Got great great audiences. You know, wonderful energy, especially on a on a Friday night or a Saturday night, those people, those people are ready to have fun. <laughs> right, right, right. That, that, it all depends on that too. Yeah, I've done maybe like twelve to fourteen standups now, and I've generally done uh, really good. Actually, I'd say about 85 percent of the times I did well. The problem is, it's so time consuming. You know, it, like if they, they, you're lucky if you get like two and a half, three minutes in the city. And, uh, you know, I'll leave my house at 5 o'clock. By the time I get home, it's 11 o'clock. Yeah. So I got stuff to do. I got, I got time for this, you yeah, know? Yeah. So that's another reason I've been uploading stuff online just to, you know, yeah. I figure somebody will see it. Some of my videos got thousands of views. So, you know, people see me. Yeah. You know, I'm sure the wrong people see me too. But, hey, you know, <laughs> maybe they're enjoying the show. Hey, guys, it's me again, you know? Yeah, that's, that's a, that also brings up another interesting idea where, where people, you know, they, they, uh, they self-censor. They don't post things. They don't say things because they're afraid, you know, like the state's watching, right? And agents of the government are watching. And what are they going to think? You know, they're going to think I'm a, I'm a menace to society or a threat or something like that. But uh, but I like uh, I like Larkin Rose's argument, which is like, we want them to watch. Those are the people that we want <laughs> to watch. Yeah, our argument. Yeah, Hopefully, they're they're, we're going to change their minds. And, uh, yeah, maybe they'll learn something. You know? Right, That's, exactly. Like I said, I'm just putting on a show at this point. You know what I mean? You know, <laughs> I, 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 at the very most, I can't imagine they hate me that much. You know what I mean? Just, yeah. just like, well, he is evil, but he's remotely entertaining, you know, <laughs> or at least, you know? Yeah, I mean, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, the way I look at my podcast and my videos is kind of like a, a snapshot of my thoughts, you know, and I, and I love that. That um, that for my kids, you know, in the future, my kids will be able to know. And like, what, and like, what did my what did my dad think about this? You know, and yeah. what, what were his true ideas? So, you know, you, you can write things down. Pride, take know? it, take and, it. Not to cut you off, but I just you know, like maybe the kids like once they become more cog uh, cognized or whatever, they'll be like, hey, my dad really tried to do the right thing. Where a lot of you know a lot of people uh, people's kids aren't going to be able to say that about their parents. So kudos to you for that. Right. You know, well, it takes a lot of balls to do what you do. So much respect to you for that. Thank you, you know? thank you. Yeah, I mean, I try to uh, try to find fascinating people, and sometimes they they find me, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I've had a, I've had a lot of um, you know, I've, I really enjoyed the people. You know, the people I've talked to is like I I, I realized that. I would not have had a reason to talk to these people if I didn't have a podcast or didn't have a channel. And so it really provided me with that amazing opportunity. So, yeah, it's yeah, really cool. And I'm going to be doing it as, as, you know, as long as I can. You know, who knows? But um, I've had you're a, doing a great job, man. Like I said, like you're one of my favorite people to watch and you're consistent, too. Like even myself, I started doing a couple of, you know, like talks with people and everything. But like I said, I'm not like on top of it. Like you're, you're on top of it. You know, that's why, like I said, I mentioned you to, to Mark and everything because, you know, you're doing your thing, man. Yeah, you know? yeah. Thank you, thank you. I um, yeah, I appreciate that. And sure. yeah, I mean, I mean, you're uh, 
you found out with a lot of awesome people. And you also went to Anarchapulco, right, this year? I did. It was and how was that? Great. Oh, it was a blast. Actually, I had a blast. I'll tell you, though, so I, I, the vegans were kind of looking at me like a, like a Tyrannosaurus, though. Like, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I, yeah, I'm pretty sure at one point when I walked by a group of vegans, like, they're, they're, they're – cup was like trembling with like the GMO free mix drink, you know what I mean? It won't be like, who's this guy? You know? But it was a good time. I had a lot of fun, you know? It was, it was cool. I got out with Lark and Hyle Mark, Adam Kokesh, and a whole plethora of other great people. Max Egan was there. Yeah. He's another one actually. I always forget to mention him. You ever want to listen to Max Egan? That guy is fantastic. He's so interesting to listen to. Um but yeah, you know what? He just doesn't put him. His I don't see his face a lot on Facebook. Like he just does the uh, you know the video chats and everything. So, mm. but he, he's another great person to check out if you haven't. Um, but yeah, no, Anna Polka was great, man. It was just you saw so many different walks of life and different people awesome. from all over, and everyone was fine. There were no fights, <laughs> no violence. Everything was great, and there was no government. Or you know, there was just, you know, no one overwatching anything. And you know, it, all those anarchists. I think there was like fifteen, sixteen hundred anarchists there. With no problems. No, yeah. no. Peaceful, pe- peaceful anarchism. It's amazing, huh? It, it actually, it actually, uh, they, it exists. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Come, come, like, come next year. I'm definitely gonna go back. It was a blast. I had a really good time. I might not go for. I think I went for seven days. I might go for maybe five, uh, just because you have to be gone for that long, you know. Yeah, but, yeah. But uh, no, I had a blast. Absolutely. I, and they were really nice about it too. I didn't even uh, like. I didn't even get a ticket. They had sold out. And uh, they still let me go into some of the stuff. And I even offered to give them money. They're like, don't even worry about it. Like, we're just trying to spread the message and everything. Wow, that's cool. It, it was a blast. It was a really good time. I totally recommend everyone should go to that. Sure. Oh, yeah, I would love to go to that. I mean, it's hard for us to leave because we have uh... – we have our, you know, our own restrictions, and you know, we're, uh, sing, you know, doing the homeschooling home thing, season. and yeah, so yeah. it's rough, it's rough, because my, you know, if, we, if I, I would feel bad going, my, my wife would want to go, but then it's a long trip, and so yeah, it's just, eh, it's just tough for us. But that's awesome, no, I you understand. know. Like you said, you got, I don't have any children or any responsibility like yeah. that, you know. I'm, I'm, I just went there to stir things up, you know, like help people <laughs> out and everything, you know. So, but it was, it was a really good time. Everybody was really cool and whatnot. I met a lot of great people that I interact with now on the internet. Yeah. And, um. Yeah, like I said, just all different walks of life and everything. So you know, it was definitely a good time. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's okay. so it's so encouraging and inspiring to see, you know, more and more anarchists, more and more volunteers popping up in you know various countries. Not even not necessarily just the United States, but all over Cuba it and came from all over the world. Actually, know, yeah. yeah, everywhere. You know, like um, Pakistan. Like you know, you see you see group, I see groups on Facebook like. Pa- um, volunteerist um, groups like Pakistani volunteers, Indian volunteers, uh, you know, Cuban. There's one guy in Cuba that I interviewed. It's like cool. Like, damn, it's getting yeah. all over the Brazil also. Yeah, it's so. been like doubling every year, the turnout supposedly too. I think there was like two or 300 yeah. persons. Yeah. Then it was like 600, then eight, <laughs> it was like 16. So yeah, like uh, like the, the governments of the world are in trouble, not just this one. Like people are slowly waking up. We might not see it in our lifetime, but it's right. coming. And I figure I'll try to dent the machine myself just with, you know, jokes and whatever it else may be, you know, exactly. like just hammering away that silly belief in authority that your mom told you. That's it. You know, it's all it comes down to is your mommy told you with all of this <laughs> stuff. You know, where did you learn everything? Your mom. You know what I mean? Like, maybe your mom wasn't right about everything, you know. I know mine wasn't right about everything. You know, right. so, you know uh, that, that's kind of how I view it. Yeah, I'm kind of. So, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say I'm kind of like you in the sense that like everyone's so serious about you know what, what we gotta pass a law, we gotta do this, and I'm 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 with you on the side just making jokes, <laughs> really? passing the time and just having serious? fun. Like, like really, you think that's gonna help? You know, like so you're gonna make it. He's like the the crime rate's gone up, and it's just like well yeah because you keep passing laws. <laughs> if you didn't keep passing laws on straws, maybe the crime rate wouldn't go. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, like, right. Nobody thinks like you said. There's no critical thought anymore. It's really annoying for me. Because I shouldn't, I shouldn't be able to think critically when you look at me. But apparently, you know, the people I'm surrounded by is like, are these people sitting out? Like, uh. yeah. yeah, I'll be, uh, I'll be making jokes and playing chess because that's my one of my favorite things to do. I'm a chess player, oh, and, uh, <laughs> nice and peaceful. I'm happy anywhere I go as long as I have my chess set. I'm a happy man. You might have to teach me. Actually, I never learned how to play chess, but I used to play a lot of Street Fighter, and uh, they say they're very similar. So I actually might be decent at it if I. Uh, Learn how to play. You know, maybe you give me a lesson one of these days. You mean you mean like the Street Fighter, like the modern one, the Street Fighter four and five? You you, you do those? Oh, bro! Like, bro, <laughs> you have no idea. I uh, I'll put it to you like this, without getting too into it, because I never really took the competition seriously. Oh, but yeah? I've beaten some of the best Street Fighter players on earth. Yeah, Ooh, I, I beat the, one of the number two guys in the United States. Uh, oh, he yeah. beat me too, yeah. but I actually was able to play on that level. If I'm famous for anything like around my way, people know not to. I'm good at fighting games. Yeah. Ah. 
You could probably even put my name in and find some of my old matches and stuff, but yeah. Ah, or on YouTube, you mean? Yeah, somewhere. Like, yeah, or Google or something like that. Ah, yeah. Ah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I still have some saved somewhere or whatever, but yeah, it would actually blow your mind. It's like, just like, really? It's like, yeah, for some reason. And, and, and who's your character that you use? Who's your, your favorite? Uh, well, it depends what game it is, and I generally can actually play as anybody, but uh, I like demons, so I went with Akuma. Uh, you know, the, basically the dark person. Ah, right. With your fireball, heat, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, you know, and, and just, just to, if you think I'm joking, like one of my favorite combos was like ducking short, standing fierce, quarter circle, forward fierce, focus cancel, forward, forward, duck medium, duck medium, quarter circle back, <laughs> duck medium, dragon punch. But yeah, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome! I'll have to check. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, I, I, I was big into Street Fighter. I got a little bit into Street Fighter Four, but Street Fighter Five, yeah. eh, I didn't really get much. I didn't even play Five. I retired until I do something with comedy. I've never even touched Five. Oh. Four, I was beast at though. I ah, love. Ah, awesome, yeah. awesome. Yeah, but, yeah. I'm about to forget, it's Vanilla Sagat though. He was awful in the first version of Street Fighter Four. Sagat was so strong. Oh, was, really? Hmm. Interesting. All right, cool. I'll, I'll have to look into that. That's pretty cool. So awesome, awesome conversation, um, uh, Justin. So, so before we go, y you know, I, I always ask um, favorite quote of all time. What would you say? Uh, I think I think of all time. I say, um, it's funny. Don't ever tell anybody anything. If you do, you start missing everybody. It's when we catch her on the ride, J.D. Salinger. It's the last passage in the book. If you wait, say again. If you don't, if you don't. It's funny. Don't ever tell anybody anything. If you do, you start missing everybody. And that's <laughs> what the kid said when he was locked up in a mental a mental asylum at the end of the book. I always liked it. It was interesting. But when I was a kid, I used to read the, the last page of a book for some reason first. And I, I did that too. <laughs> that's funny. I don't know why. <laughs> you didn't get that. the ending out of it. I was just like, I don't know. I'm just weird. I know. I just read like the last few sentences. Like, I just want to know how this ends. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. It really is. That's funny. That's funny. Awesome. Cool. Actually, um, I don't. Even, I don't even know if I read that book. I'm. I probably. I might not have. Oh, bro, um, that's the one they put in the hands of all the assassins. All the guys that supposedly killed, like you know, like John Wilkes Booth, Lee Harvey Oswald, Mark right. David Chow, or maybe not him, whatever. But uh, uh, they they like they had a copy of that book with them hmm. because it's about you know in the 1940s and 50s. People were questioning, like, hey, why is everybody so obsessed with football? Or how come this is like this? And they didn't want people reading stuff like that. Mm. So they were like, oh, yeah, the guy that killed Kennedy, yeah, he liked that book too. It's a really good book. I mean, it's not really very controversial now. But in, like, the 1950s, like, people did not think, like, how that book is written. I'll put it that way. Mm. But it's an interesting book. All right, all right. Very cool, very cool. Awesome. Well, yeah, great talking to you, Justin. Uh, really, pleasure, really, really, pre really appreciate it. Um, yeah, hopefully people can... You know, check you out on uh, on Facebook and YouTube, and uh, yeah, I hope you keep up uh, keep up the videos because I think they're making uh, a lot of people think and uh, uncomfortable, and then we need that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, brother. I always appreciate it. Yeah, great great interview. Thank you so much. No problem. So yeah, th so this is uh, Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network on theconsciousresistance dot com and solpodcast dot org. Wishing all of you have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this content and would like to see more of it, please feel free to donate and help me interview other fascinating people. You can do so through Patreon. That's patreon.com slash peacefulanarchism to help me out. A dollar a show is all I ask. If you feel so inclined to donate more, please feel free. It will only assist me in spreading the message of freedom and volunteerism that much farther and that much more efficiently. You can also donate to my Bitcoin. My Bitcoin address is in the description to my videos as well as on my website, peacefulanarchism.com. And while you're on my site, there's a donate button to donate through PayPal. If you prefer to donate through PayPal, you can do so with that. But Patreon is a little bit easier for content creators as you can set up a recurring donation if you so desire. Also, while you're on my website, peacefulanarchism.com, please feel free to sign up, enter your email address, sign up for my newsletter, and you'll receive updates every time I post something, a video or an interview. I do not send out any spam. Or you can also follow me on Facebook under facebook.com slash peaceful anarchism or facebook.com slash Danilo Cuellar 3, I believe. Danilo Cuellar 3. So either, either one of those methods, if you are able to donate, I would be most appreciative. Thank you very much for listening. 
I hope you have a magnificent day. Cell 411 is a free app for Android and iOS that replaces government controlled 911. Cell 411 allows you to preset a group of friends or private organizations to show up in any emergency. Cell 411 is a nightmare for the state because it proves their so called services aren't needed. Cell 411 has had thousands of installs, and of course, it's covered by the Bipcot No Government License. Cell 411 because your friends won't shoot you when you're in trouble. Without the government, who would build the emergency services? You and Cell 411. Get it today at GetCell411.com. That's GetCell411.com.